In this video, you're going to learn how to graph the sine and cosine graph using a table. And we're also going to talk about how to work with the transformations and get a good sketch of these graphs. Now, you learned previously about the unit circle. If you need to refresh, check out my videos on the unit circle. But we know on the unit circle that the uh, sine value is the y coordinate of each of these points, and the cosine is going to be the x coordinate of each of these points at each of the different angles. So we're going to be working with the sine and cosine in this general form here, a sine b, x minus h plus k. Keep in mind that the absolute value of this coefficient in front of the sine or cosine represents the amplitude. That's how high the waves are. The period is 2 pi divided by this b value. So normally uh, one period or one cycle of the graph is once around the unit circle here, 2 pi. And then the phase shift is a going to be the quantity here grouped with the x, and the vertical shift is going to be this k value over here. Keep in mind the one group with the x is going to have the opposite effect from the sine. So if it's like minus pi, it's going to go right pi. If it's plus pi, it's going to go left pi. So let's go through these four examples. The first example, y equals 2 sine 1 half x plus pi minus 1. What we're going to do is we're going to look at these angles as we go around the unit circle. And since we're graphing the sine, we're going to be looking at the y coordinate. So at zero radians, the sine is equal to zero. At pi over two, or 90 degrees, the sine is going to be one. At pi, sine is zero. At three pi over two, sine is negative one. And then at two pi, we've made one complete revolution here, the sine is back to zero. Now, let's take a look at the transformation. So let's start with this one half right here. So the one half is affecting the x values. This is the horizontal stretch or shrink. But when it's grouped with the x like this, it has the reciprocal effect, meaning that we're going to multiply all the x values, not by one half, but by the reciprocal, two over one. So I'm going to take all these x coordinates in our table here. I'm going to multiply them by two. Zero times two is zero. Pi over two times two is pi. Pi times two is two pi. 3 pi over 2 times 2 is 3 pi, and 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross out these old x values. These are going to be our new ones. And then this coefficient, this is our amplitude. This is our vertical stretch or shrink. If it's bigger than 1, it's going to be a stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be a shrink. And that's the absolute value. If it's negative, it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. But what we're going to do is this is going to affect all the y values. So we're going to multiply all the y values in our table by 2. So 0 times 2 is still 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 times 2 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And 0 times 2 is 0. Let's cross out those old y values. OK, now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and label our graph. So we're going to start here at 0. And it looks like we're counting by pi's. So this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. 5 pi, etc. Negative pi if we go this direction. And let's see, we're counting here by, let's say, ones. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to pay attention to the phase shift and the vertical shift. Now this one group with the x is going to shift the graph in the x direction, but it has the opposite effect. So plus pi means it's going to shift it left pi, and the minus 1 is going to shift it down 1. So what that means is I'm going to treat this point right here at negative pi, negative 1 is like our new origin. You can even sketch in if you want kind of like a new y-axis and like a new x-axis just to kind of help us to visualize this as our starting point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot these points but from here. So we're going to say 0, 0. So that's going to be right here. And then pi 2. So that means I'm going to be going right pi up 2 and then 2 pi 0. So from the origin here, this new origin, we're going right 2 pi uh, up 0. So that's going to be right here. And then 3 pi negative 2. So 1, 2, 3 pi negative 2. And then 4 pi. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi uh, back to 0. Okay. And so this completes one cycle of our sine graph. Once you have that, if you want to repeat it, you can keep going. So the next point right pi up 2, you know, and then back to 0, and you're going to keep repeating that cycle. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you could continue to work with this table here. You could say, well, okay, this plus pi 
is shifting everything left pi. So what I could do is I could subtract pi from each of these points, make this a negative pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, cross those out, and then minus 1 is shifting it down 1, so I'm subtracting 1 from all the y values, cross those out, and then you could graph those points and you don't have to worry about this shifted origin. Some people like to do it this way, they feel it's a little bit quicker, some people just like to get the final values. Whichever way you like, go ahead and do it that way. Let's take a look at another example. So for example number two, we're going to look at a cosine graph now. y equals 3 cosine 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 4 plus 1. How would we graph that one? Well, we're going to go to our unit circle again here, and because we're graphing the cosine, we know the x-coordinate at each of these angles represents the value of the cosine of that angle. So at 0, cosine is equal to 1. At pi over 2, 90 degrees, cosine is 0. At pi, our x-coordinate is negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, our x-coordinate is 0. And then at 2 pi, we've made one complete revolution. Our cosine is back to 1. Now we're going to look at the transformations. So you can see this 2 here, the group with the x, has a reciprocal effect. It's actually multiplying all the x values by 1 half. So it's a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. So I'm going to multiply all the x values here by 1 half. 0 times 1 half is 0. Pi over 2 times 1 half is pi over 4. Pi times a half is pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 times a half is 3 pi over 4. And 2 pi times a half is 1 pi. So let's go ahead and cross out those old x values. This coefficient in front of cosine, the 3, represents the height of the waves. That's the amplitude. And that means we're going to be affecting the y values by multiplying them all by a factor of 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times anything is 0. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 0 and 1 times 3 is 3. So let's cross out those old y values. Now let's take it one step further with this problem and look at the phase shift, the x minus pi over 4. Remember, the one that's grouped with the x has the opposite effect. So the minus pi over 4 is actually shifting at right pi over 4. So I'm going to add pi over 4 to each of these x values. That's going to put us at pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus another pi over 4, we'll call that 2 pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4, which is pi, and 5 pi over 4. So let's go ahead and cross out those old x values. And then lastly, plus 1, that's going to shift everything up 1, which is going to affect the y-coordinates. We're going to add 1 to each one of these y-coordinates. And now we've got our exact values. So you can see that on that x direction here, we're counting by pi over 4. So let's go ahead and label that axis pi over 4, uh, 2 pi over 4. You could say pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, etc. And then it looks like in the y's, we'll just count by 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And now let's go ahead and plot these points. So pi over 4, 4 means right pi over 4, up 4. Uh, let's see. 2 pi over 4, comma 1. 3 pi over 4 is going to be at negative 2. And pi, we're at 1. And 5 pi over 4, we're at back at 4. And so that completes one cycle. Let's see what this looks like here. Something like this, roughly. And it keeps repeating. And if you want to do it the other way that I showed you in the first example with the sign, Notice how this is shifting right pi over 4 and up 1. So you can think of this as kind of like our new origin. That's kind of like our new x-axis. This is kind of like our new y-axis. And you're graphing your points from here. That's one way to do it. Or you can do the complete transformation like I showed you in this particular example. Either way, you're going to get the same graph. Let's take a look at another example. Example number three, if you're still with me, see if you can pause the video on these next two examples. We're going to do a sine and a cosine uh, problem. See if you can do them on your own. Even if you make a mistake, you'll learn something from it. You'll get better at these, and uh, that's the key to improving. So let's dive into number three here. y equals negative sine pi over 2 times the quantity x plus 2 minus 2. How would you do that one? 
Well, you can see we're dealing with the sine graph. So we can go to our unit circle. Remember the sine represents the y values of each of these angles as we go around the unit circle. So sine of zero, the y value is going to be zero. At pi over two, you can see that y is one. At pi, you can see we're back to zero. At three pi over two, the sine is negative one. And at two pi, we've made one complete revolution and we're back to zero. So this is kind of like our parent graph, our basic coordinates. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pi over two. What does that pi over two do to the graph? Well, it's group with the x. It's gonna affect the x values, horizontal, and it's gonna have the reciprocal effect. So it's actually gonna multiply all these x values, not by pi over two, but by the reciprocal two over pi. So zero times two over pi is zero. Pi over two times two over pi is one. Pi times two over pi is two, three, four. So we're just multiplying by the reciprocal. You can think of these as being fractions like over one. Sometimes that helps as well. And then you multiply the numerators together, denominators together and reduce. Now let's look at this coefficient, this negative. What does that do to the graph? Well, the amplitude is always positive, so the amplitude would be one, but the negative is reflecting the graph over the x-axis. It makes all the positive y values negative and all the negative y values positive. So we're gonna multiply all these y values by negative one. That's gonna give us zero, negative one, zero, one, and zero. Let's cross out these old values. Now let's go ahead and look at the shift. So it looks like it's shifting left two. Remember, this is our phase shift. Group with the x has the opposite effect. The plus two is gonna go left two. So we're gonna subtract two from all of these x values. And four minus two is two. Okay, good. So now we've got our new x values. And for the y values, this is our k value, negative two. That's gonna shift the graph down two. So we're gonna subtract two from all of our y values. Okay, and now we can plot our points. And it looks like we're counting by uh, one each time here on the x-axis. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, et cetera. And for our y values, also going by ones here, let's see, we've got uh, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, et cetera. So let's plot these final points. So negative two, negative two means we're going left two, down two. Uh, negative one, negative three, we're gonna be right here, okay? And then we've got zero, negative two, which is right here, and one, negative one, and two, negative two. So check to see if your graph looks like this. It should look something like that. Now again, remember how we said the plus two shifts left two and the minus two down two? You can think of this as like your new origin in a sense. This is like your new x-axis. This is like your new y-axis. And you can see that the graph's been reflected. And uh, that's your basic graph. So great job if you're able to do that one. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, before we dive into this last example, if you enjoy the way that I explain things and it makes sense to you and you want to learn more about Algebra 2, I've got a video course with a link in the description below. So check that out where I go into uh, the concepts and examples, and I give you an opportunity to practice. So if you need help or want to review Algebra 2, check out that video course. Uh, it's a great resource. And let's dive into this example. See if you can do this last one on your own. If I was going to do this one, I'm going to realize that we're working with the cosine graph, which means that we're going to be looking at the x-coordinates of the angles over here on our unit circle. So at 0, the cosine is equal to 1. At pi over two, cosine is equal to zero. At pi, we are at negative one. Three pi over two, we're back to zero. And then at two pi, we've made one complete revolution and we're back to one. So this is like our parent graph. These are our basic values. But now looking at the transformations, what does this one fourth do to the graph? Well, it's gonna have the reciprocal effect. It's gonna multiply all the x values by four. So if I do that, I'm gonna get zero, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. Let's cross out our, our old x values. Now the 1 half, this uh, is affecting the amplitude, which are, is the height of the waves. Because this is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a vertical shrink, which means the waves are only going to be a half high. 
And so that's affecting our y values. Let's multiply all the y coordinates by 1 half and cross out those old y values. Now, let's look at the phase shift. So this quantity grouped with the x, that's going to affect the left and right, but it has the opposite effect. So the minus 2 pi is actually going to shift to graph right 2 pi, which means that we're adding 2 pi to each one of our x coordinates. And let's go ahead and cross out those old x values. And then lastly, this plus 1 is going to shift the graph up 1, which means that we're adding 1 to each one of our y values. So this would be 1 and a half, 1, a positive a half, 1, and 1 and a half. Let's cross out those old y values. Now we have everything we need. Looks like we're counting by 2 pi on our x-axis, so go ahead, let's go ahead and label that. And let's count by, let's count by halves on our y-axis. And now we've got everything we need. So we've got a 2 pi, 1 and a half. So right 2 pi, 1 and a half is up here. Uh, let's see, 4 pi comma 1. So right 4 pi up 1 is right here. 6 pi is at a half. 8 pi is at 1. And 10 pi is up, back up at 1 and a half. So you can see our graph should look something like this. And it will keep repeating, okay, in both directions. And if you wanted to do it the other way, where we talked about graphing from like a shifted origin, you can see we're shifting that origin right 2 pi up 1. So you can kind of think of this as like your new starting point, your new y-axis, your new x-axis. And you can see that cosine graph there. So great job. If you want more help working with these, graphing these trig functions like sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, Follow me over to that video right there where I dive more into these graphs and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.